What's going on guys, Kpine here and welcome back. And in this video, I'll be featuring a very strong team that helped me reach early expert and high up on the leaderboards in season 20 of the Go Battle League. That being Shadow Machamp on the lead, Shadow Drapion as a safe swap, and Shadow Walring in the back. Triple Shadow team, yeah, Jamie Finn would approve. Shadow Machamp, this thing's busted. Most of the time, it can kind of just two shield stone edge its way through poor matchups, let alone its ability to cross shot bait with its lightning fast pacing. The only thing it gets hard walled by are the poison ground types. Hence, why we have the Shadow Walrus in the back, besides the fact it covers a lot of the current meta really well. And Shadow Drapion, well, it's back to being the best safe swap in the game. The Poison Sting buff plus the oppressiveness of its charge move damage is unmatched. Plus, in this situation, it works well to bait out the fighter Walrein doesn't want to see. Besides that, this team is really flexible in either saving shields for your back mods to sweep, just powering through matchups with the champ, or even farming something down with it to then release an onslaught of damage. And with that, let's get right into the battles. All right, getting to the first battle, we lead Shadow Machamp into Shadow for Alligator. Bad lead in the zeros, but a great lead the more shields are used. I load up to five to play to the CMP tie, and they make a catch on to a Mandibus, but that's perfectly fine because we have the Walrus in the back. We swap to the Walrus once we rebank a cross chop because we know we can win CMP tie over that for Alligator later. And now we just take switch advantage here. Get to land of this Ice School Spear. Ice School Spear will land. We can let this go. We're not worried about what they have. And then we can farm down with the Walrus. Walrus gets a couple extra Powder Snows as down goes the Mandibuzz. We see what they want to come in with. They come back in with the Shadow Machamp. I go for the Ice School Spear here. I settle for the Ice School Spear. No need to go to the Earthquake because it is a Shadow Gator and that still will do a respectable amount. So I'm actually going to save my um, Walrein for later and predicting whatever they have in the back is still weak to the Walrein. Then I'm going to swap it to the Machamp, snipe with a cross chop to force that shield. We'll give up a shield of my own to the Hydro and now they're at the back to back Hydros. First Hydro goes through, second Hydro will get the second shield and we're going to double shield the Machamp. I know that whatever they have in the back, I can get that shield back from. So I load up on energy, perhaps a little bit of a risky bait right here. I play to the CMP tie, should have just full set the stone edge to force that final shield from them. And then Walrein would be able to get to that Icicle Spear to take out the Superior. But they did end up shielding that cross chop. So it worked out for us either way, as we do land that Icicle Spear, get the farm down as the of the Superior. And at this rate, there is nothing Gator can do as Drapion comes in and poison stings it down. GG's. Next battle. Shadow Machamp into Walrein. Fantastic lead. And I hate to do this to a fellow Walrein user, but they swap into a Drapion and we're just gonna cross chop right away, take advantage of that one turn it takes to switch. And now we're gonna mirror our own Drapion here. We know that Drapion can take two Aqua Tails. So we're just gonna let this move, their first move go, go for an Aqua Tail of our own. This won't be quite enough to take out the Drapion because they did shield. If they let that cross chop go, then it would be enough to take out their Drapion. But again, because they shielded, it is not. So we can let this go as two Aqua Tails is not enough to take out Drapion. I go for my next Aqua Tail right away, but they make a nice catch of that energy onto their Walrein, of which is fine because they're now switch locked into my Shadow Machamp. So I can just shield this as the Icicle Spear will do a lot of damage to the Shadow Machamp. Throw four Karate Chops, go for the Cross Chop. I don't play to the CMP tie here because if my opponent shields this move, I have the back-to-back -back Cross Chops and I'll then throw it to CMP tie them to take them out. But if I CMP tie and my opponent shields that move, then I will have to shield a return if I wanna save that energy on my Machamp. And in the back, they have a Chestnut. So here, we're gonna go for one Cross Chop. They let it go because they want to save shields for what they have in the for what I have in the back, but by them letting it go, I can just bring in my walrus and farm all the way down before they reach two moves. My opponent was put in a kind of a lose-lose situation there where if they gave up that shield or not, Walrein would be able to sweep. Jeez. Next battle, Eridos lead. Kind of a tricky one as it is a little bit of a core breaker and I don't want to swap out into my Drapion right away because they can lunge debuff it and then dip. So instead, I'm going to build up to the Stone Edge your choice to full send it or bait the cross chop. I bait the cross chop, we get the call right. And here, 
my opponent did an interesting thing and let me throw first. So because they let me through first and I was able to successfully bait, I'm then going to shield their move and go for the stone edge on the CMP tie. Which even debuffed is more than enough to take out the Ariados. Now I want to save my Shadow Machamp so I hard pivot out into the Drapion as well as to bait out any potential fighter. But most Ariados leads, they're going to throw um, a move, the Trailblaze most likely, before you reach a move. I like to just let that go. And then again, it's your call if you want to bait with the Stone Edge or Cross Chop. But either way, once you throw that move, you'll then pivot out into your Shadow Drapion. They have a Guzzlord in the back. I'm trying to go for the Outer Snow Farm down. I realize I can't quite get it, so I do have to settle for the Icicle Spear right here. I will take out the Guzzlord. I won't reach an Earthquake, so I'm going to go for yet another Icicle Spear. And if they let this go, then Shadow Machamp can just farm down this Gator. Which we do get the farm down before they get the double up on the Hydro Cannons. GG's. Next battle. Shadow Machamp into Aurorus. Fantastic lead as we will be dealing double super effective damage with those cross shops. They swap into a Glissopod and we have a fantastic answer in the Drapion. Now because they are up energy, there is a chance for them to take switch in some specific situations. But so that's why I commit the shield there. And I was also expecting them to full send the liquidation, which they do. So then I can land the crunch. Crunch won't be enough to KO. So I go for the Aqua Tail afterwards. And if they shield, that's fantastic. Because not only do I get that shield back, but Shadow Drapion isn't bulky, but it's also not extremely glassy either. So it can tank that liquidation, come back in with they come back in with the Aurorus, able to fire off an Aqua Tail at it. Does about half HP. That's kind of the power of Shadow Drapion with a non-stab Aqua Tail there. Now I can bring in my Shadow Machamp. I can take a Weather Ball. Even though it's glassy, I can take a Weather Ball and they come in with a Wigglytuff. And this is just strictly winning. Shadow Walrein does win the one shield scenario against Wigglytuff straight Icicle Spear, as long as you're throwing on proper timing. But because my opponent shielded the first Icicle Spear as they want to get an Icy Wind debuff off, I can just go for an Earthquake now. And what I do actually is here I wait, over farm a little bit, and let that charm register. It's crucial to let that charm register so the Aurorus doesn't get a farm down of my Wall Rain to then leave with a move to take out my Machamp. My opponent realizes they would only get one Powder Snow out of that, so they concede. GG's. Next battle. Shadow Dragonite lead. We're going to save swap into that Drapion right away, build up to the crunch and bait with the Aqua Tail. There's absolutely no reason a Shadow Dragonite will let go that crunch as it will essentially one shot them. So just the threat of all that damage, plus the fact that it's a Shadow Dragonite causes them to respect that Aqua Tail. And once they do shield that Aqua Tail, then if they stay in, you'll then be able to reach a crunch before they Dragon Breath you down in, in that specific situation. But in this one, my opponent swaps out, makes a very nice catch onto an Azu. And this honestly, because of the Poison Sting damage, isn't that bad of a mashup for the Drapion at all. So I can shield that move from the Azu, Poison Sting it all the way down, leave with the crunch loaded, get that crunch back from the Dragonite. And not only are we on shield parity now, but I have my wall rain, which is dealing double super effective powder snows to it. They come in with a Ferrothorn. I try and play to the CMP tie here, expect him to throw it right away, but they don't. They go for the extra bullet seed. But either way, it does not matter. Because if they shield that or no shield it, I just save that shield for my wall rain regardless. And it's going to be able to sweep that end game. So in comes the Shadow Dragonite. They cannot get to the back-to-back -back moves and we Powder Snow it down, GG's. And that should secure a 5-1, a 5-0 set. And now we're just looking for a 3-2 to be able to hit Expert. We'll see if we can do it. Next battle, Shadow Machamp into a Raquinid. Gonna load up, fire off this Stone Edge. Honestly, it's a pretty neutral matchup. Even though a Raquinid's hard hitting move of Bug Buzz is resisted by Machamp, it's a stat Bug Buzz. Shadow Machamp is pretty glassy and will do a lot of damage. So I do respect it. We get the call right, as well as landing that Stone Edge, which is fantastic. And now we get to fire off this Cross Shop here. Unfortunately, the Drapion is able to CMP tie us, so we 
wouldn't be able to get off that second cross drop there. And I realized, you know what? Shadow Machamp's energy is going to be very valuable here if they're swapping a Shadow Drapion into it. So I throw three more Karate Chops. And this is this is crucial here. Three more Karate Chops and then the cross drop. So I'm not CMP tying the Drapion. That way, I'm able to save my Machamp for later and keep it from being one Karate Chop off another Cross Chop, of which my opponent has a Diggers B in the back, so it's gonna hit for a lot of damage there. Drapion has the back-to-back -back Aqua Tails. First one will land, so will the second one. Actually, it does. It ends up getting their final shield as they wanna preserve some HP on it. They do go for the Fire Punch to take out my Drapion. And I can't bring in my, my Machamp here because they have a Fire Punch stored and we'll just go for the Fire Punch to take out my Machamp. So instead, I come in with my Wall Rain. They play to the CMP tie. Honestly, I think they were looking to swap out of there and potentially make a catch onto their Drapion and then work with an end game and energy there. But their switch timer was just not up as we're able to take them out. GG's, next battle, Malamar lead. Not a great lead for the Shadow Machamp as they are dealing super effective damage to the side waves. So we're going to go for the cross chop and then dip strategy into the Drapion. If they superpower there before they dip, I like to shield it just because it's a superpower from a Malamar. It's going to do a lot of damage. But my opponent brings in a Digger Speed and down this much energy, we're going to be able to reach two Aqua Tails before they reach a Scorching Sands, which is very nice because I'm just going to let this go. And I'm going to use this as a tie, as a chance to farm down with my Shadow Machamp. So I'm going to get a very nice Karate Chop down here. I will have to shield once. Also, by letting that go in those situations, um, when it, if it count, Digger Speed counters off your Shadow Drapion, sometimes you'll call a Fire Punch bait. And when that happens, you're kind of just strictly in a winning position. But here, we're able to get one Cross Chop off for their first shield two cross shops off for their second shield all thanks to that farm down we got now we're going to swap into our wall rain and hope that whatever they have in the back wall rain is good against if it's a flyer or ground type of some sort this match is definitely winnable still but it's a licky licky and you know there's a chance here not a very good one but there's still a chance depending on how this match plays out one more icicle spear Sorry, Powder Snow and then the Icicle Spear. Will this be enough to take out the Licky Licky? It's not. They hang on. They reach a move. Looks like they are on Shadow Ball. And because my wall rain is this low, the Malamar can just farm it down instead of having to throw. And by them being able to farm down, that is going to win them the game as it does not allow me a catch opportunity. GG's as we move to one and one in the set. Again, looking for that three, two to hit Expert. Next battle, Machamp into yet another Malamar. So same strategy. These are tough leads, but this is the way I do recommend playing it out. Going for that cross chop and then swapping into your Shadow Drapion. Now my opponent's going to load up a ton of energy and actually let me get to an Aqua Tail first. Very, very interesting decision there as we will be able to force a shield from the Malamar. Now, now they're going to stay in and go for their superpower. So like I said last time, I will shield that for superpower. And now they dip into a Shadow Machamp. And this is fantastic, right? This is what we're wanting to do. Bait out that Shadow Machamp so the Wall Ring doesn't have to see it. Aqua Tail will land. Their Machamp will play to the CMP tie. Very nice over farm by them. And I can't really shield this just because I don't want to leave my own Machamp shieldless or my own Wall Ring shieldless when there's a Malamar with a lot of energy that can do a ton of damage to the superpower. So I bring in my Machamp just to soak that energy come in Walrus, get a nice farm down. And now I want to see what they have. And it's a Dugong. So in these situations, honestly, Walrein is put in a very good position to win this end game by playing it this way, depending on what they have in the back. And unfortunately, these past two games with it being the Dugong and the Licky Licky is not quite playable because of how neutral of a matchup it is that they're able to do enough damage to my Walrein to handle it as down we the wall ring goes i had to call an icy wind bait there since the malamar had a lot of energy and we fall to one and two in the set now we need to win the next two battles to hit that expert as we pick up a fantastic lead of shadow machamp into empoleon they swap 
Gudra, and you have to be very quick on your save slot there. One karate chop and then a wall rain. Because if you don't swap after one karate chop and you throw two, they'll be able to outpace you to a thunder punch to force a shield. So if you're quick on that counter swap there, throw the five powder snows it takes to get to that icicle spear. The icicle spear will actually do enough damage to take out the Gudra. And my opponent realizes that, so they do shield their Empoleon or their Gudra so they can get more Dragon Breath damage to then come in with their Empoleon and get an incredible Metal Claw down. And if you're wondering, Metal Claw does generate the same amount of energy as pre-nerfed Steel Wing. So the counts are still gonna be 665 for Empoleon. Now I'm gonna bring him on my champ here. I will have to shield once. I noticed there, I get to that cross chop on the CMP tie to their second drill peck. So instead of throwing it, I'm expecting them to go for the catch. So I make a very risky play, swap into my Drapion, and they have a Glade in the back. So we're in a good position. They get to the back-to-back -back close combats, does not matter, as one close combat will not KO. Down goes the Glade, we leave it with a crunch, which realistically doesn't matter too much either as we do have the cross shop stored win cmp over the empoleon and take out my opponent as we ggs as we move to two two in the set decisive game five for that expert rank picking up a decent lead shadow machamp into empoleon here one cross shop won't ko the drapion and neither will an aqua tail to us so we over farm let that move go through they swap into a machamp and now we're going to fire off one cross chop and we're going to make it to a second cross chop before they get to the farm down they play to the cmp tie very risky cmp tie in case i was to win it but it seems like my opponent was very confident in their shadow machamp ivs that they would win cmp tie there but either way we able to get four both shields from them go for the aqua tail this won't quite be enough to ko my opponent will hang on with a sliver of HP as they make the Stone Edge. And here, I'm just gonna let this go. I'm gonna trust in Shadow Walrein to close out the game. We baited out the Heavy Fighter and Shadow Machamp. It is Shadow Walrein's time to shine as they have a Galarian Moltres in the back. So all I need to do is over farm by one in this situation to make sure I will be able to outpace the Drapion to an Earthquake before they reach two moves, which my opponent realizes so they concede. GG's and we do secure the 3-2 in the set as you'll see brings us over the 2750 mark to the rank of expert. If you can't tell from this video or my previous ones, I'm really enjoying this new meta so far with how flexible it is in team comps and play styles that you can work with, which I feel has been highlighted nicely with this team. So if you don't have a climbing team yet and are looking for one to give a shot, then this is definitely one worth looking into. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate you. If you enjoyed it, please drop a like, subscribe, and comment down below. Love to hear what you have to say. And with that, I'll catch you in the next one.